Hi there, and welcome back to another Bob Blast. Hi, I'm Bob Burridge, and this one is all about gesso. And why do we do gesso? It's a fantastic primer to put on your canvases, your paper, anything else that you want to paint on. It's a fantastic base, and that's really what you use it for. Let me show you the gessos that I use. So there is some fairly inexpensive gessos. Here's Cheap Joe's gesso, very affordable. Here's the more professional gesso, and this is the Utrecht gesso. It's very thick. What I mean by that is that it has a whole lot of titanium white in it, in it and it's very smooth. So Holbein paint also has different colored gessos oranges and reds and orange, yellows, and they have like 20 different kinds of gessos in these really cool bags, right? So how do I put it on the canvases or the paper? I use either these really thick brushes designed just for gesso, okay? Or I love using these cardboard pieces, leftover scraps and then I use it as a trowel. So before I even begin a painting, I, I gesso everything. I gesso everything. Whether it's wooden panels, as you can see here, or really nice, really nice canvases. Look at those canvases. This is masterpiece canvases. Really fantastic canvases. And they already have their own gesso on them, right? And or paper. I love Kilimanjaro paper. It's very thick. It's 300 pound paper. And uh, on the back side, I scribble some marks on it like that. On this side, I put the gesso. That way I will know what side's been gessoed. So let me get started and I'm going to show you how and why. I put gesso on everything, everything that I paint on. So this part is about how I gesso and more importantly, why I gesso. So a gesso is a primer before you paint. You put it on canvases, you put it on wooden panels, you put it on anything. The reason you do that is so your acrylic paint or your oil paint sticks better to it. That's the simple reason we put a primer on. And primers have been with us for centuries. So sometimes they're white, sometimes they're black, sometimes they have different colors. But let me just show you uh, how I put my primers and my gesso on my paper. I put it on everything and here's the reason why. When I go to paint on it, whether it's a panel or a canvas or a piece of paper, I will know that the reaction of my paint will be the same. It's that simple. Whether I put a gesso on a rock <laughs> or a piece of cardboard, I happen to know that when I paint on it, it'll be the same because the primary bottom line is all the same. So it's that simple. But I do love good uh, gessos, and here's the one I'm about to do. This is Utrecht's gesso. It, I could put it on a piece of watercolor paper. This is watercolor paper. I happen to like the 300 pound because it's, it's really heavy. And I can put it on with a piece of cardboard, as you can see here, a piece of cardboard, and trowel it on, or I could use a brush. So for now, I'm just gonna show you how I use a piece of discarded, look at that, discarded piece of cardboard, and I just trowel it, trowel it. There we go. Done. Took me, what, 10 seconds? And I just scrape it off, put it back. 
What I'm doing is I'm prepping the surface with an acrylic primer. That way when I go to paint on it, the paint will stick better on it. It's that simple. All right, that's paper, okay? Um, and the reason I do it on paper is so I have longer working time. The paper doesn't soak up the, the color so quickly. So I know that this surface is going to be the way I like it. And also, oh look, even a wooden panel, even a wooden panel. So this is a Cheap Joe's Prime, really good cradle painting panel. And I can use either a brush like this, or I can trowel it on. Doesn't really matter, I'm gonna do it both ways. And again, the reason I do this is so my acrylic paints will stick better. There we go. My surface is the same. Now I want to show you the brush. You can do the same thing with a big brush. This is the big brush. Wet it. I happen to like the texture and the lines of the brush in my work. So there we go. Look at that. Wow, we are putting it everywhere. I use a lot of water. There we go. You probably can't see the texture on this, but there's a lot of paint on this, a lot of gesso. really good canvas. These are masterpiece canvases. They're like some of the best. They have canvas and, and, and uh, a, a gesso that is so fantastic. <laughs> Look at these stretcher bars. Pretty amazing. So I still put on my own gesso. That way I have owner, ownership, right? Beautiful canvases. Made right here in the United States. All right, there we go. So that's me gessoing. I gesso everything. Whether I'm going to paint on a wine barrel, I'll gesso that too. Paper, I gesso everything. No matter what the quality of the canvas is or the paper, I gesso everything. That way, all the surfaces will be identical. And I somewhat can predict how the paint's gonna turn out. Hey, thanks for watching this Bob Blast. I love doing this one. I'll see you on the next Bob Blast and stay safe. See you then. Hi there, I'm Bob Burridge, and this is all about date night with Bob. We just got finished doing one. See the paintings behind me? This is a two hour kind of a Zoom painting workshop is what it is. And we were painting for two hours. You can either do it along with me or you can sit back and have a, an adult beverage and watch at the same time. This is called a fun thing we're gonna be doing. We've done them already, so it's called date night with Bob. And don't you want to do that on a, whatever nights we have? Check out the schedule. It's right behind me, and we're going to be painting like crazy. I'll see you on Date Night with Bob. Hi there, this is Bob Burridge. And I was just thinking, you know, in this time of separation and by yourselves and you're in your studio, I was thinking, I think we're all writing letters, love letters to everybody.
And so I got another idea. So let's do another virtual exhibition. It's free, no jurors, and who wouldn't want to put out their paintings of their interpretation of love notes. Let me give you some ideas. It doesn't have to be hearts and flowers and all the traditional stuff. Expand your mind for, you know, I have made some notes here, love notes, which could be the written word. It could be musical notes, physical contact. It could be hearts and flowers and champagne and candy and love letters. It can also be by yourself. Okay, just think about that. So it could be traditional or abstract. It's your interpretation of love notes. And as I like to say, show me your love, baby. So here's how to include your painting. Sorry, I had to read that, but I wanted to get it all down there. And this is going to be exciting, and I can't wait to see all your work. So I'll talk to you a little bit later about that. So get started. Love notes, your interpretation.